Hey, student. Um, for this YouTube, or we will talk about the transmission lines. Um, as we know that the transmission lines, uh, you can take a look as the you can send uh, your uh, electric power through uh, the power line from. Uh, the power station, you know, to house, and uh, that's also include the very very small transmission line that we call our uh, uh, micro strip line that you can find in micro electronic integrator circuit. For this one, I'll we'll put this one as the introduction of the transmission line visha. I myself have my own lecture and uh, we start with transmission line related expressions when you uh, take a transmission line and then uh, you cut the length or you pick up the length the X you going to see equivalent transmission line circuit look like this uh, that means you have uh, the distributed parameters R, L, G, and C, which R is test is the resistance per unit length in the unit of ohm per meter, L inductance per unit length in the unit of Henry per meter, and G is the unit of Siemens per meter, and C is the unit of a Farad per meter. The way all components connect. Uh, together is look like this one, and that's again we call equivalent transmission line circuit. You have R is connect with L in uh, series, and also our G and C are connected in parallel. And uh, you take a look at the transmission line equation here. Uh, you will uh, end up the what I call it transmission line equation that's the second derivative v of x with respect to our dx is equal to our the distributed parameters r plus j omega l multiplied by our g plus j omega c and then our vx or you can put the you can write out gamma equal to our square root of r plus j omega l multiplied by g plus j omega c and r is gamma is the complex number which have uh, the real part alpha and uh, the imaginary part is beta okay let's take a look at the how to uh, come up with a transmission line equation look at the circuit here if I uh, put uh, this point to be x and uh, this point to be your uh, x plus dx because you have the transmission transmission line length to be your uh, dx and the voltage at this point to be your uh, v of x and the voltage at this point are equal to uh, v x plus dv or uh, v at the point x plus dx now uh, you take a look at the you apply KVL and you also uh, apply KCL you have two equations and that's just give you the final transmission line equation or uh, as I you know showed to you before when you apply KVL uh, cash up voltage law and uh, K or CL sketch up our current law look at KVL here you're starting at this point and then uh, you want to see uh, the voltage at this point the voltage at this point is equal to uh, the voltage drop across uh, resistor plus the voltage drop across the inductor so uh, you can write down this one to be your VX simply equal to our uh, 
i multiplied by r dx because r has the unit of uh, ohms per meter so you need to multiply by uh, the length of the transit transmission line which is the unit of a meter also so it's give you uh, the unit of ohms uh, the same as the inductance per unit length you need to uh, multiply by the length dx so Vx equal to the voltage drop across uh, resistor plus the voltage drop across the inductor plus V at the point of uh, x plus dx and you are rearrange the equation here you move uh, Vx to the right and you have Vx plus dx minus Vx equal to uh, negative dx multiply by r plus j omega l and then uh, multiply by ix because you have the common term here dx and then you uh, divide this term by dx move to the left you end up with uh, dvx by dx you go to negative r j omega l right here and then uh, multiply by ix this gives you the first equation here or equation number one next you apply kcl take a look at this carefully i would put uh, this one as the incoming current so i have something wrong with this one here this one's supposed to be your uh, up here so I done this right here. I'll put this just right here. I. So incoming current equal to, uh, you take a look at this this point. So this point actually is the same at this point because it have the same voltage. So our uh, incoming current, just right here, is going to equal to our uh, outgoing current. So your incoming current is the current. Um, <coughs> this one equal to I at position X. Okay. And you take a look at this this point. Just take a look at it's the same uh, point or the same node because it has the same uh, voltage. It's going to be your equal to outgoing current. And this one is the I that's passed through a uh, conductance a conductor and then uh, you also have our I that's passed to a capacitor uh, become ICX and the last one you have out also outgoing current at the position or the point X equal to uh, X plus DX so you add up I X plus DX you are take a look at this one here on each term so your RG is simply uh, become uh, you apply Ohm's law V equal to IR but in this case uh, you use uh, conductor so it's become uh, I over G because the G is the inverse proportional of R and then uh, you can have IG equal to uh, V multiplied by G so that's why I write this down as the G multiplied by V at the point X because this is th has the at the voltage point X and then next you take a look at IC C equal to C dV by the T so uh, it's end up with uh, this term and the last one you keep it the same I at the point X plus DX then you rearrange you know the equation again so you have like the common term here V C um, and then uh, this term still be the same 
and uh, CDX and uh, utility differentiate VCX is going to give you a J America because there you can write VC does depend on X and depend on T in the Fraser form you can write this down as V C of X only and then uh, multiply by exponential of J Omega T correct and when you differentiate with the time here you have J Omega you know right here then uh, finally you have you rearrange the equation again you're gonna have the uh, ix over dx equal to negative g plus j omega c multiplied by vcx and that's give you equation number two and then if you want to write equation does have the term only of vc or vx you have to uh, substitute dix by dx uh, with this term and if you go back to uh, the previous equation uh, the equation of uh, dvx by dx equal to negative r plus j omega l and then multiply by ix what you can do if you want to get rid of ix you simply differentiate uh, dvx by to differentiate both sides of the equations uh, by dx so you cannot end up with uh, d2 vx by dx square equal to negative r plus j omega l and then you also differentiate d ix by dx and from equation number two you have dix by dx in the term of vx already so uh, you can get rid of you know the ix Yes, just like right here. You differentiate equation number one again with with respect to x. You end up with this equation because you are going to have dix by dx, and you are substitute the whole term uh, of this term to be your uh, this term. or equal to gamma square vx where uh, gamma equal to uh, square root of r plus j omega l multiplied by g plus j omega c and gamma actually is the complex number so have the real part alpha and uh, the imaginary part of a beta so if you uh, take a look at the gamma plane here you can write out this is the real part and this is the imaginary part and you have the real part here to be alpha and you have gamma here to be beta so this is your gamma plane and uh, this is the vector of gamma here so if you have the new parameter um, is a term of alpha plus j beta just like wave where alpha is the attenuation constant just like I told you before and this is uh, you get you have a material here and then you send the signal the signal going to be your attenuated by the term of uh, exponential of negative alpha z okay just like when you have uh, the voltage uh, at z equal to zero here you send the voltage level to be v0 so you multiply here to be v0 and then you start here from uh, v0 and then you get deep into uh, the material it start uh, the the signal start uh, to be uh, attenuated so your voltage level going
going to drop down or decreasing okay so this is what we call attenuation constant just write it right down here and it has the unit of neighbor per meter the next one is beta as we call the phase constant and has the unit of radian per meter because the shade the phase is going to change when it's the signal get deep into a material or the transmission line in this case and also you have a characteristic impedance of the transmission line which is the property of transmission line you can calculate from uh, the, the ratio of the square root of r plus j omega l over g plus j omega c and this is very important because uh, later on you're going to you're going to uh, connect the load impedance to the transmission line this one is transmission line and the transmission line here has the property of their characteristic impedance to be z0 and can be calculated from this one square root r plus j omega l over g plus j omega c uh, just for example uh, you can find uh, the friction coefficient at the load here to be your ZL when ZL is the load impedance th that connected to uh, the transmission line and then uh, minus Z0 divide by ZL plus Z0 whenever ZL equal to Z0 you have the refraction coefficient to be 0 or because the transmission line is match and this is the what we're looking for we don't want like, any reflection at the end of the transmission line which is going to affect our, your signal that received at the transmission line end okay so basically you are get the new parameters uh, z0 and your gamma well, gamma we call propagation constant of the transmission line and uh, you can write down the general form of the transmission line equation to be your second derivative of Vz re with, with respect to uh, Z equal to gamma square Vz and you can uh, write down the second order differential equation of Vz become uh, V0 plus multiplied by exponential of negative gamma Z plus V0 minus multiplied by exponential or gamma Z and if you take a look at the transmission line here you send a signal you have the voltage source right here at the left of the transmission line so this is a positive and this is negative um, the signal is going get into a transmission line the signal does the from the left going from the left to the right of the transmis transmission line we use put this one as the amplitude to be V0 plus and then multiply by exponential negative gamma Z and then uh, you have uh, the reflected uh, voltage uh, I'm going to write out this one to be your V0 multiplied by exponential plus gamma Z and you know your gamma equal to alpha plus j beta what you can see is that the voltage level have to be uh, decreases by uh, have to be decreased by the term of alpha and the beta is show you uh, the phase change because the beta is become the unit of a uh, radian per meter so uh, the phase of your voltage source when it's get into uh, the transmission line also change
okay as I wrote down here and uh, another one is the tau v of z I will call the reflection coefficient and you can uh, calculate by uh, the ratio of v minus that means reflected voltage from the load to the source and this one from the source to the load and it's the ratio between this one here and uh, for this term we call uh, is become uh, just simplicity we call it oops sorry this is the reflected voltage I would call this one to be a V0 minus and the whole term here we call uh, the voltage from the source to the load and uh, you move this one up here it's going to end up with the uh, exponential negative 2 gamma z and uh, as we defined before the ratio of v0 minus and v0 plus is become uh, the refraction coefficient at the source that's why I put 0 here as it's mean at the position of x equal to 0 and then the multiply by exponential negative to gamma z where tau v of z is the reflection coefficient at position z and tau v0 is the reflection coefficient at the position x equal to 0 or at the source and then uh, you have like as I told you before when you have the current Characteristic impedance of the transmission line to be Z0, and then uh, you have the load impedance to be ZL. You can fire the reflection coefficient at this point. I would say this is like put the subscript L, this means uh, at the load sign, and also at this part, I would say this is uh, tau V at the source and uh, represent by zero here and any particular point Z I would write this down as tau V of Z so they are different here and again you know that the refraction coefficient is just uh, represented by uh, the voltage from the load to the source and then divide by uh, the voltage from the source to the load at any particular point Z okay same as for the current you can derive the current when you know the voltage the current is equal to the voltage divided by impedance and the voltage of course the complete term of the voltage is is the V0 plus multiplied by exponential negative gamma Z minus V0 minus multiplied by exponential gamma Z and then divide by Z0 in this case Z0 is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and uh, as before Z0 you can calculate from uh, the distributed parameter of the trans transmission line this is like R plus J omega L and then divide by uh, G plus J omega C same as the voltage you can write it, uh, the current down as IZ equal to uh, the current that's flowing from the source to the load and the current from the load to the source when I zero plus is the amplitude of the current that flowing from the source of the flowing from the left to the right and I zero negative is the reflected current or is the current that's flowing from the right to the left or from the load to the source and then also uh, you can define the reflection 
coefficient for the current. Of course, this has to be the ratio of the reflected current. So this is the I negative Z and divide by the incident current or the current that's flowing from the source to the load or I plus and the same thing as you know uh, you can f is equal to or can be written in the term of uh, negative V0 in the term of the voltage also so negative is negative positive is positive but what the difference is like you can notice the refraction coefficient of the current is going to be opposite the reflection coefficient of the voltage and uh, you know the ratio V0 minus over V0 plus is actually is the voltage the reflection coefficient okay uh, sorry this is like whole term here but our V0 just only for this term we define as the voltage reflection coefficient at the source so that's uh, represented by zero here and then uh, the rest you have this term exponential negative 2 gamma z next one you have you want to uh, find the uh, input impedance at any particular position on the transmission line by definition your impedance uh, when uh, according to uh, Ohm's law your impedance simply equal to uh, the voltage divided by the current and you also you already have the voltage here and your current you already have equation here it might be it might look uh, the same but you have to notice this is the the sign of the voltage here and the sign of the current here is different and of course I equal to V over Z0 but you cannot just write you know pick up this V and simply divide by Z0 because the um, you have to go through or the equation of the relation between I and V you go back to uh, equation I believe equation number two here or uh, you go to equation number one when you're looking for current equation you have to differentiate V of X with respect to it X so that's why it's give you uh, the negative sign the negative sign of what? the negative sign of uh, right here because do or uh, differentiate um, the voltage equation with respect to Z okay so uh, finally you're going to have uh, imp input impedance at any particular point on the transmission line Z at the position or at the point Z is going to be equal to Z0 characteristic impedance and then multiply by V0 plus exponential negative gamma Z plus V0 minus exponential gamma Z divided by V0 plus exponential negative gamma Z and you can notice this one the sign different so in conclusion you already have equation for the reflection um, coefficient tau you also have an equation for the current I you also have the cur the equation for the voltage V and then uh, you also have the equation for input impedance Z of Z so uh, this is what I wrote it down here we start with the equivalent circuit of transmission line we have R L that's connect in connected in series and then you have G and C that's connected in parallel 
that you apply KVL you can apply KCL you end up with uh, the new parameters of uh, gamma does depend on uh, alpha or attenuation constant and beta or the phase constant and then ze zero is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and ZL is the load impedance that you connect to the transmission line and finally what we are looking for you need to be able to write down V the voltage equation at any particular point on the transmission line also the current at any particular point on the trans transmission line also or input impedance and also the reflection coefficient at any particular point on the transmission line as well and then uh, for this case you are just looking for the relation between uh, these parameters V, I, Z and Tau for example this one what I did is the, the input impedance at any particular point on the transmission line is become Vz over Iz and I can change you know V in to be in the term of uh, the refraction coefficient at the load or at the Z input you take a look at the position Z equal to zero your Z input the input impedance becomes Z zero multiplied by one plus tau V zero over one minus tau V zero right, you take a look at the transmission line again you have the source right here and you connect it you connect the load right here ZL you have characteristic impedance of the transmission line to be Z, Z zero you can fire the input impedance does include the load impedance from this equation you already know Z zero the characteristic impedance of the transmission line what do you need to phi is like tau v0 or your reflection coefficient at the source n or the other equation that you can calculate this is the standard equation here you can find input impedance at the position z or the point z is become z0 and multiplied by these terms and you know your grandma is equal to or alpha sorry uh, sorry uh, grandma equal to alpha plus j beta that's what you need to calculate in the term of when r l g c is given let's take a look at for uh, different cases to get to make to get you uh, some idea okay in the case of open circuit of course your ZL equal to infinity so uh, this term is much greater than this term so you can say this term you ignore this term and you ignore this term so you're going to end up with uh, Z0 over ZL multiplied by hyperbolic 10 of gamma multiplied by L minus Z so you get the open circuit at the load right here it's simply ZL minus Z0 divided by ZL minus Z0 and then uh, we are when ZL much greater than Z0 you ignore this term so you have ZL over ZL is become 1 for the input impedance of the open circuit represented by OC that means open circuit you are ignore this term, you ignore this term so you can have ZL over ZL multiplied by hyperbolic 10 gamma multiplied by L minus Z and then uh, ZL cancel out 1 over hyperbolic 10 is become hyperbolic cotangent uh, gamma multiplied by L minus Z for now for the short 
circuit ZR equal to zero yeah, take a look at the diffraction coefficient at the load end here uh, short circuit represented by SC uh, you have like ZR minus Z0 over ZL minus Z0 when your ZR becomes zero you have uh, negative Z0 over a negative Z0 and thus give you a negative one and this is not very good ex uh, this is not what we want okay because if you take a look at the very simple here and this is the transmission line and this is the voltage level let's take a look at the DC uh, voltage for example you have incoming voltage level to be 10 10 volt at the load end here you have the refraction coefficient that's mean uh, the ratio of V L up there from the load to the source to be V L or negative and you divide by the voltage from the source to the load or we call incident uh, voltage is become negative one this mean uh, your V L negative is going to have the voltage reflected back from the load to the source but you will get like the opposite phase or uh, the phase different to be here 180 degree so when you have like incoming voltage to be 10 volt at the load here you're going to have another reflected voltage to be negative 10 this is the worst case so you have no voltage at the load because it's cancer out okay so this is just for example the general cases the same thing as there you apply the equation for the input impedance of the short circuit at the position Z you have ZL to become a zero, ZL becomes zero, so you end up with Z0 hyperbolic tan gamma L minus Z over Z0 and then Z0 cancel out so you end up with Z0 hyperbolic tan gamma L minus Z and if you multiply by your input impedance of the short circuit and input impedance of the open circuit the other term is become a Z0 and then uh, hyperbolic cotangent of gamma L minus Z you may multiply two terms together 10 multiplied by cotangent is going to be a 1 so you end up with uh, Z0 equal to square root of Z in input impedance of the open circuit multiplied by input impedance of the short circuit so basically uh, for the transmission line you don't have so many equations but you can uh, write transmission line um, equations in the term of parameters that you need parameters that we're talking about here are you have like Z0 you have ZL you have our gamma you have uh, the friction coefficient tau at any particular point on the transmission line you can uh, want to write you know see your your input impedance at any particular point or any particular position in the term of Z okay so uh, let's just get back uh, just make sure you understand about what I try to give you here um, we start from the equivalent transmission line circuit and then uh, we apply KVL and then KCL and finally you are come up with the transmission line equation uh, second derivative 
vz with respect to z equal to gamma square vz and then you derive for the current equation and you also have uh, the reflection coefficient tau v for the voltage and you also have the reflection coefficient for the current as the tau i at any particular point z and next step you derive for input impedance or z of z and uh, finally you have uh, parameters v, i, z and tau and you need to uh, write you know equation related to uh, these parameters so that's why I say like you don't have so many equations actually it's come from the very very basic equation but just for the use or what you need you're looking for z input impedance you need to write equation in the term of or the z0 or zl so in the real thing for the transmission line circuit what you know okay you have transmission line here and you connect your zl here and you have a characteristic impedance z0 which sometimes is given or sometimes it's not given but you can calculate from uh, the distributed parameters does mean I'm talking about R G L and C and you have the voltage source this can be either in the term of the alternate current or it can be direct current or DC current or DC voltage or the AC voltage you can calculate for uh, if you're looking for V a parse tip that's mean the voltage from the source to the load or the voltage from the load are to the source or we call reflected voltage you can start by using from uh, parameters from the circuit this means you need to use the ZL you need to use the Z0 and you know the length of your transmission lines so that's why you have L here and you are actually you are when you know ZL Z0 keep in mind that you can calculate for tau at any uh, particular point on the transmission line or you can find tau L equal to uh, ZL minus Z0 over ZL minus uh, sorry plus Z0 and from tau, tau L you can find tau 0 and you that's going to lead you to find the voltage at any particular point on the transmission line okay you come back and take a look at the voltage right here If they ask you to find the voltage at any particular point on the transmission line, you know gamma equal to alpha plus j beta, and uh, of course you can find from uh, distributed parameter that's become r plus j omega l multiplied by g plus J and we can see right? and then to find V0 you know that your V0 you can find from here and uh, this is V0 plus and V0 minus you can find from tau V0 so what about uh, tau V0 of course if you know tau V0 you can find the ratio of V0 over V0 plus now uh, you take a look at uh, this equation here 
this might be a little bit complicated but uh, if you write this down you know as the inner my lecture here you will see uh, clearer pictures you want to find uh, tau v0 you can find tau v0 from uh, tau v at the load and that's why I say that uh, you use the load impedance and you use the characteristic impedance of the transmission line to calculate V uh, tau L when you know the tau V L you can find tau V uh, 0 because this is actually equal to tau V, v L you just multiply tau V L by the term exponential of positive to gamma L and then you can find V0 and that's V0 as I told you before is going to be equal to uh, v, uh, the amplitude of V0 negative or at the source over V0 positive at the source so outgoing voltage and incoming voltage okay so uh, this is just the introduction of uh, the transmission line and then uh, I will show you more example so we can solve you know, problems related to transmission line together to get a better pictures or to get a better idea